Bangladesh, home to over 165 million people, is one of Asia's largest emerging markets. Like other places around the world, we see here internet becoming a part of our daily lives. With over 100 million mobile subscribers and an early stages of 3G network, Bangladesh is quickly becoming an ideal place to experiment with new ideas. And these experiments have already started. Young people are working really hard to turn their ideas into a business, a startup. These young entrepreneurs, they chose to see the world from a different perspective and use the internet to power their dreams. The startup Dhaka team aims to imagine a different kind of future for our generation and come together to tell a story of possibilities. We want to show how the power of the internet has transformed the way people learn, shop and the way people do business. But before all of that, we have to ask ourselves, what is an entrepreneur? Entrepreneur are many things, but the main thing is that entrepreneurs must be driven by passion. It cannot be about just making money. Our passion is to do this, and 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 They learn from others, but they write their own story. Our motto is to meet the expectation of the world, and to do this, and to do this, and to do potential. We believe the only essential ingredient of a startup is growth. In this documentary, we will focus on tech startups in Dhaka. So let's take a look at some of these people who got into their startups. I got started in the startup scene in San Francisco uh, back in 2009 after working at Google for a little while. Uh, I left to go to a smaller company and there's so much energy and every day was full of excitement. Um, that company got bought by Google so I didn't stay in the startup scene very long. Uh, but after that I wanted to, I always wanted to come back and that's what led me here to Bangladesh uh, to do my own startup. Basically I was seeing my friends and uh, families having problem in terms of making a CV so I thought how do we make it simple for them. So I was looking for partners who can partner with me and make, uh, you know, build a platform. So I looked out and found uh, Shadab Bhai and Shakur Bhai who are my co-founders for uh, AmarCV.com. We have a laptop and a smartphone and a computer. But in Bangladesh, 80% of the people do So we don't want to create a new divide. I mean, broader way, 80% of the people serve us. We serve us as we serve us, but we serve us as we serve us. Our Shamagram is an e-commerce platform. We have a lot of people who are doing this. We have a lot of people who are doing this. Well, the music industry has been ridden with piracy and problems with regards to royalty payments and recently the artists have not been getting paid for their hard work. So we thought we could disrupt the music industry with technology and that was the beginning of Dupdugi. advertising and marketing sector for the last five years um, so ever since this year we started to uh, think that it's important for us to enter uh, the new media the new market the new emerging sector within this industry so we chose digital marketing and thus Magneto was born so Magneto Digital is one of the first full-service digital agencies in Bangladesh Before starting Chalgal.com, I worked um, in the Silicon Valley. When I quit Silicon Valley, I wanted to do something in Bangladesh. And specifically, I wanted to do something with technology in Bangladesh. We started with e-commerce because I, we think that it's something that people can relate to every day. Like, you have to buy oil every day, you have to buy rice every day. And if you're having that experience every day, the tech culture in Bangladesh will grow. Newscred started right here in Dhaka in, in Bangladesh. Uh, Shafkat was here for his wedding. And the day before his wedding, we met at the Radisson Hotel to talk about an idea that I think little did both of us know would consume the next five, six years of our lives. We uh, started in a small office. There was four of us, four engineers, Iraj and myself. Um, and the first version of NewsCred was actually a consumer-facing news site. We had you know, grand ambitions. Uh, but over time, we actually pivoted the business a few times. 
Um, but ultimately, we've always been dedicated to building up a large team here in Dhaka. I started doing some random production work in uh, 2011 um, and I was posting it on SoundCloud and Faisal heard some of my stuff, he really liked it, so he got back to me and then we uh, we thought that maybe we could have more people collaborate and grow it. So and then he started, uh, he started up a Facebook group and uh, we just started adding people who would be interested and then it went on from there. Let's face it, not having a boss feels great. Entrepreneurs will tell you that the most. They love the independence and the feeling of doing something really different. It drives them. But this drive, however, comes with a price. Long hours, having to forget friends and family, and the constant fear of not hiring the right people. And of course, money. Money is really hard to come by. So let's see what the startup founders have to say about the beginning stages of a startup. Startup path is fun, it's exciting. Um, you know, I think working for a big company has security, has stability. Uh, startup path is much more about creating something and venturing into the unknown. So for me, that's what makes life exciting. I love working at GNR because GNR is a platform that really empowers the Bangladesh web. And the internet in general is something that I believe is great for society. It promotes education, uh, you know, freedom of speech, uh, it's good for democracy. And for there to be a better internet, there needs to be fundamental business models in place uh, so people can create websites, post content, and, and uh, be incentivized to do a better job of of creating that content. So what, that's what GNR is. GNR is a fundamental platform for people who make web content to monetize that content. And that's really the big idea, is that we want there to be a, a super Bangladesh web full of great local content. If you want to look up legal advice or you want to book your train tickets, uh, all those services sh should exist on the internet in Bangladesh. And uh, one of the reasons they don't exist yet is because we don't have some of the incentive platforms in place. So GNR is hoping to be one of the major platforms that enables that. So to start off with, you need to forget about your family life. I know that sounds bad, but that's a reality for the first one or two years. Uh, then you need to be prepared to work all morning, all day. You go back home and you're working at night. So that's the reality in the first couple of years. So our CV funding to basically we bootstrapped uh, to get the funding. Uh, we haven't actually reached out for external funding uh, or any other uh, sources. Finance doctor, that whom that has a friend row against the scenario key because it's not a product, it's a service. Then bank will start to know the key. So should the cost of it? Even now, should our manager actually? I mean, she just didn't believe our should be. We funded the GNR through angel investors. Um, initially, we had one angel investor who was uh, a friend of ours, uh, who we explained the business to, and he was very interested in, in developing the business. Uh, later on, we had a second angel investor come on, um, who was not just an investor, but also a strategic partner that decided to put cash in. So I approached one of my business associates at that time, and he was very interested in uh, what we wanted to do. And what happened was he then um, connected us to another angel investor who at that time I didn't know and then in the end what happened was both of them invested in our um, startup as angel investors and we raised the fund and started this company. So we heard about angel investors who help fund these startups. There are also venture capitalists who provide funds in exchange for a part of the company. So who are these people? 
and what's their role in Dhaka's startup ecosystem. Is an investor that gets involved earlier on with a company and provides them with risk capital for them to prove out their model and to prove out the viability of their business. The big difference between uh, angel investors and VCs is uh, where along the spectrum they get involved. And angel investors typically get involved much earlier on than VCs. But keeping in mind that uh, in, in this day and age, that's definitely changing as VCs are getting involved earlier on uh, to take advantage of, uh, of investment opportunities. But really, the role of an angel investor in Bangladesh is, is something much more uh, hands-on than you would see um, in other places. So for example, you would need to provide both your time and your knowledge and your money in guiding what, in guiding your investment. And that, that really requires a lot more dedication, a lot more commitment than uh, maybe one would do other elsewhere. That's the problem right now, that it's very difficult for entrepreneurs to find structured angel investors. And I think that that's going to change as I think there is an opportunity to build within the ecosystem the opportunity to bridge the two together. The name of the game is creating opportunity. So how does one create opportunity? You need to provide resources and access. To build a community, one has to create that platform. So that's kind of what we're doing now, creating a platform to promote engagement. So one of the things you know now starting to happen is where a lot of startups are going to different networking events where they can reach out to different individuals and say, hey, I'm looking for capital. Can you connect me to someone? And I think that culture is coming slowly and changing. And Bangladesh, you know, we're forming one of the first angel networks where, and we're going to be partnering with several organizations to spread that awareness and news so that uh, startups know that, yes, there is an angel network and you can go and pitch your idea and get capital. And that's the point, to create a situation where imagination can turn into reality. And this is what I call creating opportunity. I think, you know, when it came around to raising money for Loose Monkeys at the beginning, because the idea was so revolutionary, because there was a major need for what Loose Monkeys does for job seekers as well as employers, um, the investors understood the need gap right away. I think the idea that you can disrupt an economy and industry with technology uh, struck a chord with the investors and we did present them with a very viable business model which they found pretty appealing. Well, we we're very fortunate actually to be funded by some world-class institutional VCs. So we raised venture capital in the U.S. Um, and we've raised $20 million so far in Series A and Series B financing. Like, I really look for the energy and the motivation. And it's like they're passionate about what they want to do. And they're, they're passionate about building, you know. It's not like they're going and they're doing something different. And, you know, the second thing that really gets me intrigued is when they form a team. Like, that's the fundamental way of getting success. Like, and the third thing is when I see a startup with a mentor network already, and they have a board of advisors that they've already started talking to and speaking to. I think that shows is that they realize that, look, they also need help and that extra push to go forward. And of course, after that, you know, if they're able to get revenue, they're able to get traction, and if it's something like you need, it, you know, I just jump at it. A lot of the times, the people that I've spoken to, they're working on several different projects and they're really hedging their bets and that really annoys me. You need to be focused, you need to be determined on this one project. You need to kind of burn all other bridges so there's only one path that you can follow. And that path will definitely take you to the other side. That's what I'm looking for. So typically in a startup, the, the most important thing we look for obviously is, is a great set of founders, you know, are, are a group of people that are passionate about what they do and they really believe that their company can achieve what they hope that it will. We're the type of people where, you know, we've done business for so long in this market, we see opportunity very clearly. And it's nice to see when startups are also seeing that opportunity and they're able to intrigue your mind and say, hey, you didn't think about it this way, but if you think about it this way, it's actually really uh, has a lot of potential. And I think 
startups that can intrigue you is something that excites me the most. Lifeline platform is blood donor and blood receiver. The blood donor is a blood receiver. The blood receiver is a direction for the blood receiver. The blood receiver is a blood type. The blood type 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 is a blood type. And our mission is to put the world to work. Loose Monkeys is a very fun project. It's, a, it's, a, it's an online job board that is intelligent. Um, we are for the first time giving job seekers and employers a system where they can come and talk and you know, be in one database. We're giving real-time job matches that gives job seekers an understanding and an involvement that they never had before. I guess the best way to understand Loose Monkeys is that as the world economy is readjusting to products being developed in different parts of the world and sold in different parts of the world. One of the mandate of Loose Monkey is that why not do the same with human resource? Why do people have to be stuck to a geographical region? Bangladesh is a community that is thriving. Um, I'm, I'm from Canada, I travel back to Bangladesh every six weeks to eight weeks. And that's because not only is there opportunity in Dhaka, but now there's raw talent in this community. Um, the startup scene is, is alive and there's a lot of talent that is finally getting together to make a difference. Uh, why Bangladesh, why Dhaka? I think the timing couldn't be better. There's a lot of people coming together, putting a lot of smart ideas together at the right time, and uh, I'm excited that Loose Monkeys is part of this community at this, at this time. So far, as you can see, the startup life is tough. But then why would anyone do it? What leads them to do this? What drives them? As I had mentioned earlier, if you are in the startup scene uh, strictly because you want to make money, there are much easier ways of making money. Get a job. If you want to change something, if you feel passionate about something, then by all means I would encourage everybody to step into it because the experiences that you're going to go through as you go through your startup life are going to be mixed and there are going to be extreme highs, there are going to be extreme lows and as long as your vision is not altered you will navigate your way out of it. So there, there are many ways to make money and it turns out that building a startup is not the easiest one and so I think most entrepreneurs are driven by something different and I think what drove us was we wanted to do something that could fundamentally change the world in a big way. So let's talk about failure. As much as we like to pretend that failure doesn't exist, sometimes it's good to face reality and accept defeat. How do entrepreneurs deal with failure? I think there's one key reason behind our success, and it is undoubtedly persistence. We've made many, many mistakes along the way. We've pivoted our company many, many times. We've changed our product, our team. We've started many offices around the world, closed one. And this is something that every startup will go through. The only promise of a startup is failure. And your job as an entrepreneur is to bulldoze through every failure. But one thing that separates entrepreneurs from the ones who are not Entrepreneurs really, really look at failures as a learning experience, and I'm not just paying lip service. 
There's going to be initial times when you're going to feel the world has beaten you up and you can't stand up. But an entrepreneur very quickly switches from that mentality into thinking, well, what did I learn from it? How do I not make the same mistake again? Again, that all goes back to your passion for what you do. If you have failed in something that you're passionate about, well, that's the price you pay. If you succeed in something that you're passionate about, life couldn't get better. এখানে আমার বলতে হবে এন আই খান স্যারের কথা সেক্রেটারি মিনিস্ট্রি অফ আইসিটি উনি একটা কথা খুব বলেন উদ্যোক্তাদের ব্যাপারে যে ফেল ফাস্ট যত তাড়াতাড়ি সম্ভব ফেল করে নাও তা তাহলে দুটো উপায় থাকে ইদার তুমি এটা আর কখনো করবে না অর্থাৎ হয়তো উদ্যোক্তাই হবে না ওর ওই একই জার্নির মধ্যে দিয়ে আবার যাবে বাট নতুন একটা এক্সপিরিয়েন্স দিয়ে যাতে এই ভুলটা আবার না হয় সেম They're also learning about it by trying and investing. You can say all you want that I'm looking for the right startup and the right thing, but the way you find the right things is just by doing it. And that's why I believe that there is no failure. It's all a learning process. Now, if you don't learn from anything, then that's a different story. As an emerging market, Bangladesh still has many challenges that make internet businesses a difficult model. We have low credit card penetration, trust issues with the online payment system, and a whole lot more. So with the absence of these basic building blocks of a digital ecosystem, how can online businesses still thrive here? When you're starting a technology business in Bangladesh, it can be very difficult and different from that in India or Silicon Valley because you don't have any support mechanism. You don't have uh, someone to promote your business initially. You don't have any tech crunch. You don't have an incubator that can guide you initially. You don't have any Y Combinator. So it is challenging for entrepreneurs in Bangladesh. Yeah, it's, 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 it's way different, I think. Uh, there are some parts that are the same no matter where you go. I think business is somewhat universal in the sense that, you know, you have to do sales, you have to manage relationships, you have to uh, create good clients and partners. Um, but the major differences are, I think, uh, one would be the infrastructure, certainly, uh, from Silicon Valley to Bangladesh. Uh, we have to deal with uh, a different type of uh, back end to our business. So the way we collect money from clients or the way we advertise. Um, those things uh, tend to be a little bit more offline uh, than in Silicon Valley. We were not insiders in the music industry or any of the corporate houses or the advertising firms. But the challenging thing for us is to uh, show off our technology and get all the record labels, all the musicians on board, all the advertisers on board and all the corporate houses on board. For me that has been the most challenging and exhilarating experience. I think there was a genuine demand for our product in our market and uh, what we try to do is build a good product, good genuine product that is built here in Bangladesh by Bangladeshi designers and Bangladeshi programmers which focuses on Bangladeshi musicians and uh, there is this uh, appeal to the mass consumer that, uh, that a product like Dugdugi can emerge from Bangladesh and I think there's a genuine gap that we filled in and I think that's what caused the, the massive uh, responses that we've had so far. There are a lot of features which are coming, among them uh, the payment gateways are coming, that is Bcash integration, Prag Bank and DB Bill Nexus card. People are gonna buy the songs through these things, the three different rings and there are a uh, new thing which is coming, that is Scratch Card. People are gonna go and buy a scratch card and they can scratch the number and put it in the website and they can get the uh, wallet there. So this is the one feature we are uh, working on it and which will be available and apart from that there will be a social feature. People are gonna see what are the songs his, his or his, her friends are watching. So th this is the thing and uh, the last feature which is coming is radio. So you select a genre and you start playing unlimited music. So yeah, there are a lot of more uh, features are also coming. What we 
have done is we got our own transportation system our own logistics uh, uh, to handle these orders on time and also the payment mode we have made it cash on delivery I'm sure that the building block of the online solutions provided with the online payment region is a little bit behind us but there are some solutions that we already use for some of the online uh, solution there we have a little solution provided with the solution that we have to use it's a virtual payment region or virtual master card system so we can use the virtual gateway to the virtual payment block This is a, a world internationally renowned platform that handles payments from point A to point B, meaning from one country to another, allowing the abilities for clients to be able to send payments or remittances around the world. Well, originally we started by getting into Bangladesh to help understand the, the, the area there. It's, it's a large remittance marketplace, but we've also seen since then a very large uh, you know, potential for e-commerce activities, both locally and as well internationally. So if I were a startup, I would find one or multiple uh, mobile banking service providers, either Bcash, DBBL or Islami, or a combination of a few of those. Go sign up as a merchant payer, receive the necessary documentations to fill out, submit, wait for three days to seven days, however long it takes for them to prove, and then I have a merchant account. With that merchant account, I can advertise and tell people that if they want to buy services or products from me, this is the account number where they need to transfer funds to. Simple as that. You know, like, uh, because we are starting up uh, our whole ecosystem of e-commerce, I mean, there's going to be a lot of challenges, but then our job is to overcome the challenges, you know, and that's what everyone else has done. Look at India, you know, five years ago, their e-commerce was still climbing and, you know, rising up the rank. But uh, today they're, you know, at a total different level where they've got a much better infrastructure. Our job simply is to take it to, you know, to the next level. So there could be a number of things that could help improve the scale-up of online businesses. I think the most important among them would be trust. We have inherent trust in dealing with cash. Uh, as a nation, we haven't had much experience in anything far beyond. Uh, so the trust factor comes from a series of things, the government behind this, the regulators, the strength of the regulator, but also history. As you and I begin to see many of our friends and relatives using it, hearing good positive stories, that builds a collective trust. We've seen there's been a number of experimentations on providing government to people payments through mobile banking, some garments factories paying their employees through mobile banking. All of this over time will contribute to a collective trust that's built up for mobile banking. And I think it's not too far uh, into the future when we have that in place for e-business and uh, to flourish in this country. I think if I could give one um, recommendation to the startup community in Bangladesh and in Dhaka in particular, is that be aware that a lot of your fellow countrymen are coming back. I've been in Canada for 40 plus years. Now I'm back in Bangladesh. I'm investing in Bangladesh and I'm not the only one. There's a big crowd of people who are heading back to give back. I think if a synergy can be created between the people from Dhaka right now, the youth of Dhaka who are looking to do startups and if they reach out to people who are coming back to Dhaka to help start up and be a part of that scene. I think when these two types of people meet and they have a common place and as this documentary is trying to provide, I think that would be the best thing that could happen. And as far as internet speed and other stuff is concerned, it'll all be taken care of. There's a lot of people coming in, there's a lot of money being invested. I think these are going to be things of the past. In Bangladesh, everything is centered to Dhaka. So many of the services, including entertainment, education, health care, you get only in Dhaka. So a lot of people are unconnected and they don't get access to you know, these basic needs and basic services. So 3G for sure will help shorten you know, this distance. It will help the unconnected people to be connected. And uh, you know, entrepreneurs and uh, the business houses, they can really come forward to shorten this bridge.
outside, startups often look very glamorous, and it's actually a very fun challenge. But it really is a challenge. I think sometimes people don't realize from the outside how much work it really is to really build something, to build a product, to build a business, to build uh, a community with your colleagues and your employees. But ultimately, it shouldn't feel like coming to work. So while we have to do a lot and go through a lot, and we've been through many challenges and hardships, every day it feels like we come in and spend time with the people we really care about. And I always say, we get paid to hang out with our friends. always talk about the challenges but as soon as you have one side of the coin you also have the other side of the coin because wherever there are challenges there are equal if not more opportunities and so while most people come to Bangladesh and they see problems left right front and center an entrepreneur he'll come here and he'll be excited because he'll see opportunity he'll see a problem to solve everywhere he looks and I think that's the magic of entrepreneurship, and I think that's the potential of Bangladesh. Our journey started across the road in that pile of rubble you see there. So that pile of rubble used to be a building. And in that building, there used to be a clinic. And in the garage of that clinic, uh, me and Shafkat, we interviewed our first engineers and designers. And we're very happy, um, looking back at our history, to now have three offices around the world, uh, in New York, in London, and most recently, this building is now gone, and this new building has now emerged, and we just moved into our new office looking down at the birthplace um, of where we started. I think the biggest problem are mentors, and which I believe a documentary like this is uh, taking a lead on trying to provide the importance of a startup scene in a country like Dhaka or Bangladesh. And I think mentors would come out and coach the young people of the country on what the startup life is like, what to look out for, so that they can move forward and uh, claim their right position in the startup scene. So we heard about successes and challenges in startup life. We also heard about angel investors. But what about the other players in the startup ecosystem? There are organizations that hold hackathons, startup pitches, and co-share spaces where people can work together. What did these people have to say about this brewing startup community? And what's their role in all of this? One, two, three, startup! a platform for young entrepreneurs to come together. It's an opportunity for them to meet new people, get ideas and get help and even network with people. So I think this is the start to great and wonderful things for Bangladesh. It started in Dhaka but I think this will move to the rural parts of Bangladesh and come up with brilliant ideas and the ideas will turn into organizations. I saw people pushing the envelope and thinking big, uh, thinking that Bangladesh should be a player in the global economy commensurate with its size. This is the seventh largest country in the world. GBG or Google Business Groups is an initiative of Google. It's a part of their global outreach program. And there are currently 
more than 120 different GBG chapters all over the world. And we here, we represent GBG Dhaka. So the main objective of GBG Dhaka is to increase the adoption of internet in Bangladesh. And how do we do that? We do that through events. As we have organized so many events in the past one and a half year, we've identified amazing local startups that are already doing things, and they're not just doing things, but they're actually taking it to the world. Altogether, 350 participants joined the hackathon, and this was all volunteer work that they gave 36 hours of their time for our cause to make water and sanitation sector better in Bangladesh. Right now we are hosting a whole bunch of coding competitions, entrepreneurship competitions, and, uh, and it's not really happening here all over the Dhaka city and other places in the country. But we want to take it to the next step. We will have our own in-house mentors who come, will come from different business backgrounds who can sort of mentor these new entrepreneurs or one of the entrepreneurs. And, at the, and also at the, at the end of the cycle, we will also connect them to potential investors, different kind of angel investors, institutional investors, so it can be a one-stop shop for them from start to finish. We hosted the, uh, the event in January in 2013, and it was a, for me it was a very successful event, given the fact that I had very my standards were in the sense that I was, I just wanted to see more people coming into the startup scene and I, I think in that regard this was a successful event. Uh, the ideas that were coming up, some of them were very interesting, some of them were okayish, but I think the important thing is when people were finally speaking up about ideas. Usually what you see in Bangladesh is business plan competitions, people just in writing a very nice proposal, submitting it and not doing anything about it. But for them to be there and then actually come up with a basic demo of the, of the whole thing, was for many people a uh, very big first step. And I think that was something that really inspired us to continue in this particular stream. Shetu, we are an organization, we help youth to start a tech-based you know, uh, startup or entrepreneurship uh, through education, finance, and other activities. Basically, as I traveled around the world, you know, in, on, for business, I didn't really see a whole lot of Bangladeshi tech startups in the international arena. So I looked at, I researched, I looked at the market, and I really saw that there is a lack of ecosystem, a lack of structured curriculum slash accelerators in Bangladesh like we have in the States. If you look at US, you have tech stars, Y Combinator, there isn't anything yet. So that's how Shetu was born. They need help uh, first in validating, validating their idea. Is it really a good idea? Is there a market for this idea? And next, they need help, you know, access to mentors who can actually help them build the product or the services that they are thinking about. And then they need funding as well. How the system know that you are actually going from A to B? We were planning on using an online advertising scheme. smart uh, startup space in Bangladesh is, is that we have just started uh, uh, this trend in Bangladesh and we are trying out a lot of new things. Uh, we are failing fast but we are learning very quickly and we are coming up with interesting ideas all over the place and across across different spectrum of um, social and economic activities and, and that's very encouraging and interesting to see. I 
think the biggest thing that startups can do now uh, is to prepare themselves for the future. And startups are in the future uh, of business, and it is the future business. And it is important that they shift their attitude from being local to being global. And being global is not only connecting with global, also adapting the global attitude. And, and the global startup attitude is about openness and embracing ideas and embracing everything that comes in and, and, and that is something that our startups need to do to open up to the world. Not everybody is focused on using technology to create a business. Some use technology for the social good to make life better for everyone. Here in Bangladesh, quite a few startups in Dhaka use the power of the internet to further close the digital divide and connect a vast number of unconnected people to improve their quality of life. So let's take a look at these people who see tremendous potential in changing lives through technology. Obviously we understand that technology is uh, being used as a tool to solve certain social problems and Ashoka recognized that and appreciates that. So um, historically and moving forward into the future, our challenge is going to be to identify these um, social entrepreneurs who are using technology to transform their community as well as the respective nations. Um, I believe DNET um, and Dr. Ananya Raihan is a prime example um, of, of a fellow who is using technology to transform um, the society. Uh, one of our flagship programs is Aponjan. Uh, it's a email service for expecting a new mothers and also their family members. Uh, when a mother is registered, she receives services for 86 weeks, starting from pregnancy up to one year of baby's age. So services offered through voice messages or uh, text messages and also a mother can call and consult with the doctor. Maya is the first website that has been dedicated to the women in Bangladesh. It has got everything a woman will need in her entire life, starting from uh, a guideline for during the times of pregnancy, recipe page, beauty page, medical advice. It is basically the the source of information that will make a woman uh, take make better uh, decisions in her life. She'll she'll have better choices in her life. So. We are getting business support, but we would really, really love to reach out and, you know, um, come um, form partnerships or uh, with other NGOs and get more like support, not just financially, but also in order to uh, expand our reach. we heard about from actually somebody who visited us from the Harvard School of Public Health was how people were using Android phones to walk around slums and in this case in Mumbai map toilets to figure out all the different toilets that existed in one slum. After this person came here and presented to us we thought you know the slums at this point are in a bit of a black hole to us, so it would actually be really helpful if we went to slums, mapped out BRAC's programs, community gathering sites, and other community resources that existed. Um, in DACA, there's so many different nonprofits working in slums. A lot of times they're working right on top of each other, and coordination is a big problem. So this last summer, we had several interns come um, from India, from the United States, actually with their own Android phones. And so we were able to use uh, open source technology, open data kit from Google to um, make a quick survey. They went out here into the slum over about a three-week period. They mapped uh, probably a hundred different community sites including schools, madrasas, police stations, um, mobile money agents, all sorts of different things and put it on a digital map that's now openly available online. Uh, Dhaka is one of the most vibrant cities that we've ever visited and because of which uh, we found some of the most engaging and dedicated people to solving urban problems here. So that's why we keep coming back, actually. Uh, the bus map was a combination of some early work that we started while we were students. And we uh, were able to collect a lot of data with, with mobile phones. And so the bus map was a combination of us realizing that we could produce something that hadn't been done in Dhaka, even though 
DACA might have the most bus riders in the world. So it started from the idea that we could actually possibly get a bus map done in a few months with not a lot of money, and, uh, and that's how it all started. When we first started the data collection, even before we were focused on buses, um, we went and did counting of all the different transit modes at different sites throughout the city. And this was within the first week of ever being in Bangladesh for myself. And every site we went to, I was kind of amazed by how many people there were. It was just kind of m more humanity than I had ever experienced. And I would come back and, and tell the other teammates about it, and they'd be like, oh, wait till you go to this next site in the, in the city tomorrow. And again, it would just repeat, kind of growing and growing this experience of the kind of masses of people that exist in Dhaka. Challenge is not only that. There are many challenges. Some people say that the day night is very difficult. Or the night time 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 This community that's brewing is just amazing. There's so many fantastic people that's out here, and they've got this energy, they've got this openness, they're collaborative, and it just gives me goosebumps as I'm getting right now, is just when thinking about it, is that the potential I just see is gonna be big. It's not gonna be this small, it's gonna be this big. And I feel like people need to hear the real story of Bangladesh. And I think with this documentary project, we are bringing out the real stories. So what advice do we have for young people thinking of becoming entrepreneurs and creating their own startups? I think the biggest piece of advice that I can give to young entrepreneurs is that uh, if you think you're too young for this, you're not. Uh, the best time to start a business is now. The best time to go out there and do something on your own is right now. And even if you fail, that will be the best learning experience that you've ever had. And that will be worth more than what the degree or whatever, what job experience that you might get in a few years. Startups should think about traditional business as well, where they can bring technology and uh, you know transform the sectors. What's really important for all of you out there is there's today a payment platform for all of you. If you can figure out a way to find and solve a problem for a large customer segment, you have a way today to accept payments and provide those services profitably. There's two things. One thing is to always keep dreaming because that's what's gonna drive you all the way to the end. And number two, keep sharing. One of the most important things that I've learned being part of the startup community is that it's a, it has a mentality of pay it forward. So whether it's about sharing your ideas or sharing any type of help to colleagues or to anybody part of your team or outside of your team to other startups, always help if you can. That if you have an idea, you can follow your dream. The only piece of advice I have for any young entrepreneur out there is to find something that you really love and never let it go. Because if you really love what you do, it will never feel like work. And you will do great work. And that great work will ultimately change the world. Startup Dhaka is not just about this film. We have bigger ideas. We will continue to try and find ways to help local startups find success. Because success breeds success. We want to share these startup stories around the world so that people seek us out to collaborate and do the next big thing and hopefully change the lives of millions. This is Startup Taka.